Well, in the studio t with me for a longer conversation on how the CBN's decision will affect the economy is a financial analyst, uh, Yemisi Shola Oyegbade. Yemisi, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Thank you. Good yeah. afternoon. Thanks for having me here. All right, Yemisi, let me yes. start this way. What okay. are your expectations? Okay, so the general consensus is that the rate should be maintained. Um, ideally, I believe the CBN would want to be able to cut the rate because... Um, but because of um, the figures, we, we saw the inflation figures. Inflation came out at 11.61. Although CBN believes that that was driven primarily because of the border closure and all of that. Because before um, the border closure, re inflation rate was at 11.02. Do you understand? But everybody believes at this point in time, it will be suicidal if um, CBN does anything with the rate. They should maintain it. But I'm of the opinion that CBN might want to pull a fast one on us. Mm. Ideally, they should cut the rates because um, if you remember way back in 2017 when the dollar naira rates skyrocketed to like 500, I mean, there was some kind of yeah. panic in the system then and um, the bankers community came together and, you know, I think the outcome of that was the um, INE FX window mm -hmm. and we had different, you know, FX rate was segmented into different um, levels to address different sectors of the economy. And over the years, we've seen that the FX rate, the narrow dollar rate has stabilized. It's, you actually have some predictability to reach right, right now. And so I believe that the CBN, with the dichotomy of interest rates that it played by um, barring um, non-bank financial institutions and individual investors, and then corporates from coming to the OMO and making sure that um, the deposit money banks and the foreign portfolio investors, they are still able to play in the OMO market. They are trying to play the same kind of game, having different, different interest rate um, regime within the economy because, you know, they have to try and manage inflation, but at the same time, the economy needs to grow. I, I, I like to budge in there. There is supposed to also be this marriage between the fiscal side and the monetary side. But that's both from the government yes. side, from the central bank side. Yes. How well would you say we've seen this marriage? Is it really as it's supposed to be? Well, there really isn't been marriage. In, in terms of fiscal, from the fiscal point, we've not really been seeing much. Yeah, the government has tried to push money into the economy. We know they put a lot of money into construction and into roads and all of that. But the CBN has come very, very strongly. And it's, I would say that the, 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 the effort, the initiatives of the central bank has been working. Way back in July, they brought out this loan deposit ratio of the thing. I mean, you, you have to have a 60% loan deposit ratio. And we realized that by adhering to that, the CBN actually reported that loans to the private sector grew. And if you look at the GDP that was GDP figure that was released, you realize that the banking sector, financial service sector, also saw an increase from that point. Do you understand? So there really isn't been that much married, but the, the central bank has really been doing their bit and we've been seeing a lot of progress in what they are trying to do. And for example now, prior to the um, Omo barring of non bank um, corporates and um, non bank financial institutions. Lending rates in the economy was around that, maybe 25 you want to borrow from the bank. But right now it's around that 17, 18% oh. because you realize yeah. that the banks, they really want to meet this. And in meeting this, you have to be competitive. Do you understand? Well, security is also important. Yeah, security is also important. But what the CBN is trying to do is, if the economy is galvanized, mm. because you realize that over the past um, few weeks, since the barring of the OMO, the um, Nigerian Stock Exchange, it's been, it's been recovering. That was what I was going to. It's been There's recovering. Like a shift. Yeah, it's, it's been like recovering. A shift. Because if you realize that the last um, non -tra um, um, Nigerian Treasury Bills auction, um, the central bank offered, offered 185 billion, but people came for 555 billion. You know, that, that was the amount, I mean, that people mm. brought. brought. Mm. And the outflow, the CBN couldn't take up everything. That money had to flow somewhere. It flew into equities market. So you realize people, because normally you going into fixed income, it means you want a steady source of income, revenue, and all of that. So we realize that um, mostly tier one banks that were regular dividend paying and other stocks that were regular dividend paying, they were the ones that are the first, you know, first um, flow of the, of the, of the flow of, of the funds. funds. They are the flow. And there was something I told my friend, I said that um, when God is blessing your neighbor, it means that God is in the neighborhood. <laughs> so you realize that other um, stocks that are probably not so blue cheap, they also benefited from it. Overall, the stock exchange has been growing and growing and growing, which I think that is what the central bank is trying to do. We want to make this homegrown because over time we've realized that most of the economic policies are not working for us.
So we want to try and, it has never been done before. Nigeria is the first economy that has had segmented exchange rate. I tell you. I segmented, agree. and we've that's, added, that's, it's that's been predictable, do you understand? It's been predictable, it's, it's people are able to plan ahead. The other day, um, SMDQ was saying, that was some, some months back, that they are looking at um, giving 10 years future so that, I mean, to try and attract foreign direct investment. You bring your money, because, I mean, the rates are stable now. We can project, I mean, for you and all of that. So let's look at bringing confidence back into the capital market okay. which is something that is very very important because the market actually measures everything that happens or happens in the economy now how well would you say uh we we kind of get in that back that confidence we need to really get it back a hundred percent i know it's not easy because investors at the time they sat on the fence at the time they were even over the fence yeah. so what is happening at the moment how do you see us building back this confidence so now the capital market has been given a second chance of course. Because we know that between now, I mean, we have some maturities that are coming in before the end of this year. Of this year. And then we also have um, the last auction for the year. And the, everybody might not be accommodated. Do you understand? So we have glut. There's liquidity coming in towards the end of, end of the year. The money has to go somewhere. So the onus now rests on the corporates to ensure, I mean, there should be good corporate governance inside. You should try and look at your books. And also, but then, they can't walk out of the economic environment that they are in. Mm. So more also is on the government to ensure that there is an enabling e environment for these people to thrive, for these companies to thrive and then be globally competitive. But mm. there is a lot of work to be done. This new lease of life that has been given can be frittered away. Let's go down to the fundamentals again. Last week, the GDP figures came up yes. at 2.28%, uh, yes. uh, looking, uh, well, a little uh, fair. Um, Inflation, 11.61%. Yes. And all of those figures, <laughs> they're not looking too good. If we were to compare with the projections, even of the Economic Growth and Recovery Plan, which are looking at a growth of about 5 to 7%. So when are we going to get there? <laughs> or how soon are we going to get there? It's, it's a long walk, a long road to freedom, like Nelson Mandela said, but we'll definitely get there. Mm. One step after the other, a little here, a little there, we'll definitely get there. And how are we going to get there? There should be policy consistency. Exactly. Policy yeah, consistency agree. and policy reinforcement is very key. Um, if you look at the GDP figures, the um, basic minerals, iron and steel sector, it, it contracted further by 5.06%. And I remember the um, Minister for Mines and Steel was yeah. saying that um, at Quara, sometimes last week, it was saying that over time, the federal government is looking at banning importation of iron and steel to be able to like kind of grow the economy. But that is going to be when that sector is been able to achieve some set, set, set of um, um, sustainability in addressing local demand. Do you understand? So over time, we know we're going to get there. But we have to be able to pay some price. We have to be willing, we have to be ready. When the, when, when the borders were closed, everybody was complaining. I went out one day, I wanted to buy um, imported rice. There was none. It was local rice I found. And I bought and it, how does I it cooked taste? it. It was good. <laughs> and I don't know I how to I like that we are becoming, we are, it, it, it was, we are it taking was, charge. It was good. It was good and it was dry and it was fresh. You know, unlike, I mean, this imported rice, at times you put it in the pot and it starts floating. This one, everything starts still. And it took more water, it took more time to, and my pot was filled up. Wow. Yes. So we need to be able to believe in Nigeria. We need to be able to wait for Nigeria to grow. I think it's because we've had this mindset for a long time, and we believe that only imported things are what we can use here, or that there are things that can feed us, or we just have this mindset of believing that only international stuff is what we can, you know, because if we think Nigeria, by Nigeria, to everything Nigeria, it all comes back to us. Yes. Local content. Yes. That is what we are talking about. Yes. And if we do this, of course, one way or the other, we're going to grow the economy. Yes. I, I, I see it like, I, I, I don't know, I don't know. But as Nigerians, I think we just need to get this straight. Is that how we grow our economy or we remain the way we are? We now, now, but some are saying some moves are aggressive. Let's, okay. go, let's go to that. All right. uh, like the border closure. Some are yes. saying, oh, how long can we continue to close the borders? That we need to just come to the table, talk to some people, and let's understand what really... Let's focus on this border closure. To you, what are really the positives? Uh, would you say they outweigh the negatives, or would you say the negatives outweigh the positives? For <laughs> anything to grow, even if you want to lose weight, it's mm. not easy. Yeah. It's not easy to build anything. So, for me, 
this is a step in the right direction, my mm. personal opinion. Prior mm. to now, I was thinking, oh, oh they close the border, price of things are growing, I mean, increasing and all of that. But I sat back and I did my research, and, and I saw that it, it is really, really good. For example, um, one, of the, um, one, one of the things I found out was that the, the rice, um, rice farmers that benefited from the Ankobo Rice Program, they said they had stock. Mm. Over time, nobody was I mean, requesting. But when this thing came, people were making payments down, doing prepayments, even for crops that were not ready. Do you understand? And if you check, agricultural sector grew in the GDP figures that was released. Do you understand? That is one, that's one, 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 one positive for me. I mean, there is, there is growth that what the CBN has been trying to do, Uncle Boros program, is not all a waste and all of that. Do you understand? Also, inclusive growth. Was, inclusive growth. There was something also that I saw the um, volume of um, petroleum that, that we lift wow. has reduced. Wow, that is, that is very important. That has Subsidy. reduced. That's so if the volume of petroleum, you know, lifted has reduced, then it means subsequently we're going to have to have reduction in subsidy payment. So we really have to be able to bite the bullet. Oh, okay, so, so, so yeah, let me see. I, I'm being told uh, that now that the central bank governor has reeled out the figures and all figures remain the same, status quo remain. So NPR stays at 13.5%. All other figures remain unchanged. It's breaking. That's live just right now from the CBN headquarters. Gordon Emefili is letting Nigerians know that all rates will remain unchanged. So uh, Yemisi here has been saying that, and I think we are on that line. Yemisi, I think we got it right. Rates. Yes, uh, yes, so yes. the central bank governor, despite all of the fundamentals, they, they would love to cut because they want to be <laughs> they able would to love grow. To cut. Yeah, <laughs> the desire is to cut and grow the real sector of the economy. <laughs> I mean, as big as the GDP is, do you understand? It's only the oil sector that drives us. And we know that globally, the economy, we the don't global have our economy. To diversify. Yes, we all have efforts to diversify. So it means that we really need to do more. We, as a people, we also need to be able to support the government. Wow. Well, this is so nice. It's nice really talking to you, Yemisi, uh, first time on the show. Yemisi Shola Oyegbade. We'll be having you uh, come come some other time, you know, to really talk more about what's happening in the Nigerian economy uh, as you, you know, contribute to your own country. This is really nice having you on the show. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us this afternoon, talking about the MPC meeting. And finally, the resolution is out. Yes. And I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure we're able to get it right. Yes. We got it right this yes, time. Yes, we did. Thank you very much. Again Thanks for, for having me.